As promised last time, let us now take out some time to look at topological sorting. Finding an order in a graph that actually makes sense. This is a very interesting concept, but surprisingly light. So hopefully, you know, you'll enjoy the break. You're watching another episode of Graph Theory. Hello and welcome back to Graph Theory. So, topological sorting. Now, this idea might be a little bit strange to you. How do I look at a graph and say there is a certain order within a graph? Sure, if you were to look at a graph like this, you would probably be as confused as I am. But in fact, if we were to start off with a simpler graph, you'll be able to see what I mean. In fact, take a look at this graph, which is really just a straight line. I think intuitively you'll be able to say that, you know, A comes before B, B comes before C, and so on. And the reason for that is because of all the directed edges. To visit C, you need to start at A and traverse through to B and then get to C. So you can sort of feel an ordering there. In fact, that is the intuition behind topological sorting. To make the intuition more concrete, let's understand a simple rule of thumb when it comes to getting a topological sorting. And that is, we cannot visit a vertex until all the vertices that lead up directly to it have been visited. To sort of seal the deal on this concept, let us take a look at a very simple example here. We're going to do this trace entirely using intuition. So first of all, we really only have one vertex here that fits the bill, and that would be vertex A. Because of course, for the rest of the vertices, the neighbors leading directly to them have not yet been visited, which is why we go with A first. Having picked A, the next step is now sort of ambiguous because we can pick either B or C, and they are both valid. Whether we choose to pick B first, then C, or C first, then B, both work just fine. However, what we cannot do is to pick D before we've picked both B and C. The reason for that, of course, is that we violate our rule. So our topological sorting at this point is A, B, C, D. It can also be A, C, B, D. Once we have D, that allows us to visit E, giving us our final topological sorting. I ought to mention at this point that not all graphs have valid topological sortings. In fact, you can only perform topo sort on DAX, that is, directed acyclic graphs. So, right off the bat, we see there are two different conditions, and let's try to understand why. We're going to start by first looking at the acyclic aspect of this restriction. So, first of all, consider a graph with a cycle. Then, apply our rule of thumb for topological sorting to this graph. You realize that what this rule of thumb is basically saying is that we cannot ever visit any one of these three nodes. We cannot visit A because C has not been visited. We cannot visit B because A has not been. We cannot visit C because B has not been. So what we've created here is what we can call a cyclic dependency that can never be resolved. So yeah, for valid topological sorting to exist, the graph needs to be acyclic. On top of that, it also needs to be directed. Now, intuitively looking at this, the problem might not be very clear, but if we were to apply the technique we've learned in a previous episode, well, we can actually replace every undirected edge with two directed edges going in opposite directions. However, in the context of topological sorting, we've basically created cycle skill law. So this reduces back to a cyclic issue. Every single undirected edge creates a cycle, and as a result, there will be no topological sorting. With that understanding, we can move on to our next point, which is the fact that topological sortings are not unique. In fact, we've already seen this in action earlier on. We've already seen that we could pick either B or C at this step. And what this means is for this particular graph, there are actually two different valid topological sortings. So whether at the end of the day you get one or the other, you would still be correct. The reason why this can happen is because the definition of topological sorting is pretty lenient. 
as long as you do not violate our rule of thumb, you will be just fine. Going back to uniqueness, we can be very sure that for every directed acyclic graph, there must be one topological sorting. However, there is a condition we can check to see if the topological sorting is unique. And that is to check and see if the topological sorting actually lies along a Hamiltonian path. Recall that a Hamiltonian path is basically a path that visits every node exactly once. For such a path to exist, we can actually you know, rearrange our graph until it looks like the very first one we've seen this episode. It is just a straight line. For any other graph that does not exhibit this property, chances are there are multiple topological sortings. So why TurboSort? Why do we actually need this and what is it used for? Well, a lot of the time, a topological sorting is useful for dependency resolution. Of course, calling it dependency resolution makes it sound like a very computer science-y thing, but it can really apply anyway. In fact, in a context of school, the example often quoted is in terms of the modules we pick. Many of these modules have prerequisites, so we have to actually fulfill the prerequisites before taking that module. That is a concept very similar to that of topological sorting. You have to visit the predecessors of a node and you have to make sure that you visited all of them before you can move on to visit the final node. Of course, dependency resolution also plays a part in computer science. For example, let's say you're downloading packages for use in a programming language. Certain packages rely on other packages. So you gotta have those installed first before you can install these new ones. So yeah, there are actually many applications of topological sorting. So there you have it. That is the concept, that is the intuition behind a topological sorting. I'm sorry we were unable to cover an actual algorithm today. You see, there are actually two algorithms I want to cover on this subject, but this preface needs to be said. I can't just jump into the algorithm and try to describe this as we go along. It would be too much information. So yeah, to make up for a lack of an algorithm today, what's going to happen is for the next two weeks, we're going to get graphs episodes. So yeah, we will be able to sort of catch up on lost time. Speed model can wait. That's all there is for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may want to check out a playlist of the other videos in this series. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.